Do you have a money personality? Find out in this video and learn how to use it to your advantage. I'm going to show you the psychology of money and how to identify your money personality. Your money personality can help you make smarter financial decisions that will lead to a more fulfilled life. Keep watching, by the end of this video you will find out, how to start investing the right way in the stock market, whether you are a beginner or in your 20s, you will learn how to make money, create passive income and manage your personal finances. Money is a tool that we use to buy things. It's also a symbol of status, power and success. Psychologists have studied the psychology of money for decades and they have found that it has a significant impact on our happiness and well-being. Have you ever wondered why money makes people act the way they do? That's because having the wrong psychology towards money can affect our actions and decisions. The book, The Psychology of Money, by Morgan Housel, teach me to see money from a variety of angles, to change the way I used it. I will share with you some of the things the book says and talk a little bit about the lessons I learned from this amazing book, which helped to change my mindset on how to manage my personal finances in a positive and sustainable way. Hopefully it can change yours too. Morgan Housel, has written about how money can be a positive influence in one's life. Morgan Housel, is a writer and partner at Collaborative Fund. Previously, he was a journalist for The Motley Fool and The Wall Street Journal. Housel, details the relationship between money and happiness, arguing that people are more likely to be happy when spending on experiences rather than things. In the book he explains the difference between needs and wants. He argues that needs are things like food and shelter while want are things like a new car or boat. He says that people often focus too much on their wants, which can lead to unhappiness in their lives. He also talks about how people often do not appreciate what they have because they want more. In the book he talks about how people who buy things like expensive cars or homes are actually less happy than those who don't buy these things because they feel like they need to keep up with society's standards of success. An important takeaway from the psychology of money is, doing well with money isn't necessarily about what you know. It's about how you behave. And behavior is hard to teach, even to really smart people. Before I move on to the next topic, if you want to learn more about, money, investing, personal finance, business and how to make better decisions in life. There's a link to buy this book on Amazon in the description box below, at the comments section. With that said, let's talk about the psychology of money in different terms that will help you understand what is your money personality. I'm going to tell you right now, what are the five different personalities, to identify when it comes to money, this will help you be conscious of which of them are you. So, you can understand better when it comes to manage your finance on what is the psychology of money and why does it matter. The first one, that will help you identify your money personality is known as the spender. You are a person who likes to spend money on things that you want. You know how to budget, but you don't always follow through and live within your means. A spender is a person who enjoys spending money and doesn't want to save anything. What are the consequences of spending too much money? Living outside of your means and overspending can cause a negative impact on your financial health such as, debt cycles and interest owed. Not being able to save for retirement. Moving on to the next money personality, and that is, the saver, you are a person who likes to save money and doesn't like to spend it on things that you don't need. You are a person who saves money for the things you want. You rarely splurge and you know how to be frugal. A note of caution, the spender and saver personality types are often thought of as polar opposites and can find it hard to relate with each other. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to these personality types, so don't take this as an opinion on whether one type is better than the other. By the way, if you're enjoying the tips so far and want more videos like this, hit the like button so I know. The next sign, I have for you when it comes to identified your money personality. So you can understand, what is behind the psychology of money and why does it matter and that is. The risk taker. You are a person who is willing to take risks with their money in order to make more of it, but those risks can sometimes backfire and cause financial trouble for you. The next sign will help you understand what is the psychology of money and why does it matter to know your money personality, this is known as. 
The investor, you are a person who likes the security of having their money in investments rather than spending it on material goods or taking risks with it as an investor does. Because they want the stability of knowing that their investments will grow over time and provide them with income for years into the future when they retire from work or need additional funds for other uses in the future. The next point on your money personality is the achiever. You like to work hard for success, but you also like the idea of saving for retirement or making a long-term investment that will pay off in the future. Now before I move on to the next topic, let's find out what is the psychology of money and why does it matter. Money is a powerful motivator. It can be used to drive people's behaviors and decision-making, but it can also be the root of many negative emotions and destructive habits. There are four major types of money personalities, we need to be aware of them. So, you can use it effectively in your life, to avoid its pitfalls. The four major types of money personalities are. 1. The, I'm so poor, personality, these people will do anything to get money and avoid debt at all costs. They may be more likely to take a job they don't want or work longer hours just to make ends meet. 2. The, money is everything, personality, these people will only work for the highest paying jobs and are often focused on getting rich quick, which can lead to reckless decisions like gambling or investing in risky ventures. 3. The, I'm so rich, personality, these people are the opposite of the first type and will spend money without thinking about it, often on flashy cars, clothes, and homes that they can't afford. 4. The, money is just a tool, personality, these people don't care as much about money as they do about other things in life like family, happiness, or their health. I invite you to leave your comment below, if you knew these four major types of money personalities. Now, with that out of the way, let's move on to the next subject, on how to start investing the right way in the stock market, whether you are a beginner or in your 20s. Investing in the stock market can be a complicated process if you are a beginner. However, there are some simple ways to start investing in the stock market. It is important to find a strategy that you understand and stick with it. Here are some tips to help you get started. When investing in the market, it is important to stay within your means. Avoid overextending yourself and put money into investments that will bring in a good return on your investment. Make an investment plan and do not try to improvise once you are invested in the market. It is important not to make last-minute decisions when investing, as these can be costly mistakes. Set up an emergency fund for yourself, so that no matter what happens you will have some money saved. Many people may have been told to invest in the stock market as a way of making a fortune. The truth is that this is not always possible and anyone who thinks they can become wealthy through investing in stocks should think twice about it. The truth of the matter, is that many people who try to make their fortune through the stock market end up losing more money than they would by simply putting their trust in other investments such as bonds, savings accounts, or annuities. The problem is that many people try to make their fortune through the stock market by buying and selling shares at a whim, which often leads to speculation with little knowledge of what they're doing. If you want to become wealthy, you should consider investing your money in other ways rather than trying to speculate with it in the stock market. If you're still interested in investing in the stock market, these tips may help you start safely. 1. Learn about the basics of investing in stocks and how to set up an account. 2. Understand how risk affects your investment choices. 3. Determine which investment strategy suits you best. 4. Find the right stocks for your portfolio. Let's talk about how to start investing in the stock market, in your 20s. The same advice for beginners investor goes for 20-year-olds who want to invest in the stock market. Investing in the stock market is a great way to grow your wealth. It is also a great way to learn about the world of investing and how it works. I will provide you with all the information you need if you have a plan for start investing in the stock market in your 20s. Money millennials are more likely than any other generation to start investing in stocks by their 20s. This means that if you're a millennial who wants to invest in stocks, there are some things you need to know before jumping into the market. The first thing about investing in stocks is that there are risks associated with it, just like with any other investment. The second thing about investing is that it takes time for your money to grow, 
as much as 10 years or more depending on which company and what type of investment you choose. Thirdly, don't invest more than 10% of your portfolio on cryptocurrencies. The rapidly fluctuating value of these currencies makes them a risky investment for many. Choosing the right online broker is one of the most challenging decisions you'll make as a beginner investor. Therefore, I will recommend one of the best online brokers. eToro's platform is intuitive and easy to use even for beginners. I personally use eToro.com for investing. There's a link to sign up in the description box below. A quick disclaimer. All opinions expressed in this video are solely opinions I am not a finance expert. My opinions are based upon information I consider reliable, but does not warrant its completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. Do your own research before deciding whether or not any idea sharing here is a good investment for you. With that out of the way, let's talk about how to make money and create passive income. There are many ways to make money and create passive income. Some need more time, while others can make you more passive than active. Here are some reasons and benefits of starting your own business. The thing is, times are changing and you need to start a business to be able to make money and generate passive income. I'm an entrepreneur with some years of experience in this field, I feel like I can tell you about the benefits, based on my knowledge. By starting your own business, you'll be following your passions, you can achieve financial independence, you can control your lifestyle and your schedule, you can help other people and so much more. Having passive income is a great way to have more financial stability and security. Passive income is generated with little to no effort on your part, and it can provide you with a sense of security that you may not have had before. There are many ways to make money in the modern world, but some of the most popular methods are starting your own business. Before I move on to the next topic, if you want to learn more about creating passive income that paid good money, then make sure you click the link in my description box below at the comment section, I have a video that I dive deeper on how to build the best online business from home. Now moving on to the next subject. Do you often find it hard to keep track of your personal finances? I understand this happens to a lot of people, because it happened to me in the past. Not having your personal finance under control, can make it difficult to have a successful life especially if you have debt. That's why it's important to take action and make sure that you stay in control of your finances. Just know that, the majority of people struggle with debt at some point or another. Personal finance is a term that encompasses the management of one's income, expenses, and wealth. It can be described as everything from budgeting to saving for retirement. It is important to set up a budget and save money for the future. The first step in managing your personal finances is to create a budget. This should include all of your income and expenses. You should write down what you spend each month on necessities such as rent, utilities, food, etc., and then compare this to what you spend on luxuries like entertainment or clothes. Once you know where your money goes each month, you can start making adjustments so that you are spending less on things that don't matter as much to you. The second step in managing your personal finances is to save money for the future. Saving money provides security in case of emergencies or other unforeseen events which may cause financial stress in the future. One way to do this is by setting up an emergency fund with enough money to cover three months worth of living expenses. Third. Be aware of your spending habits and look for opportunities to save money on choices you may make. For example, if it is more expensive for you to commute by car than by public transportation, try using public transportation instead. Fourth, develop a plan for your retirement savings and take steps towards achieving it. This includes having a clear understanding of how much you need in order to maintain the lifestyle that you want in retirement and researching how you can best achieve this goal. Be mindful of your own spending habits and the effect of those habits on those around you. With the ever-increasing cost of living, it is more important than ever to take steps towards making your personal finances sustainable in order to lead a life that is fulfilling both financially and emotionally. With the help of an app, today you can use personal finance management tools to get your finances under control. You can track your spending habits, set budgets, and get alerts on your phone. 
you can become poor or even go bankrupt if you do not have control over your personal finances. I've been there, I know how it feels. I think I have tried a bit of everything, so I can provide some tips to help you guide yourself. Clear control over your finances is the key to not losing money entirely. Having a lack of financial knowledge could lead to bad decisions being made about your money, and not knowing when to stop spending. That's why I recommend you to read. The Psychology of Money. This book provided me an understanding on depth of how to manage my finances. The Psychology of Money and Why Does It Matter? is a subject that has been studied for many years and it is still a topic of interest. There are many different reasons why money can affect our behavior in different ways, but it all boils down to the person and how they view themselves. So far I've shared, how to start investing the right way in the stock market, whether you are a beginner or in your 20s. I give you some reasons why you should start a business, how to make money, for create passive income and manage your personal finances. If you want to learn 5 ways rich people make money with debt and how you can do the same. Watch my next video where, I cover all the ways they do it so you can learn. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment about your thought on today's video. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.